Hey everyone, Jared here at Go Engineer, and today I'm going to be doing a case study on spherical patterning in X generative design using a golf ball as my case study. We have some golf enthusiasts here at Go Engineer, along with many of you, our viewers and customers, and it turns out the golf ball is a good modeling challenge due to the complex and diverse dimple patterns. As some of you may know, it is geometrically impossible to cover a spherical surface in a strictly hexagonal pattern which is the primary dimple arrangement for a golf ball. So it takes some strategizing to firstly create that pattern, but there's an added level of complexity if you want to make minor adjustments to the geometry without starting over completely. And what I'd like to do now is show the finished product of a couple of golf ball designs here and how powerful XGen is at adjusting different parameters. For the first design here, I'll start by increasing the dimple depth this maintains the position of all the dimples, leaving them all in the same place. So now they're really encroaching on each other, and for that dimple size, it makes sense to also increase the spacing. Now on the monitor tab, we're tracking the uniform dimple depth and the overall surface area. Full disclosure, there are some points during the adjustment of these values where I've clipped the recording for the sake of this video. Some of these adjustments took somewhere around 20 or 30 seconds to complete. The second design has some of the same parameters, but some unique ones as well. This semicircle slider controls how many dimples are going along one half of the sphere, or half the equator of the ball if you want to think of it with world measurement terminology. The slider accomplishes two things. It makes the adjustment of value smoother and it allows the designer of the part to set some boundaries so that the person demonstrating the part doesn't go too far out of range with the parameters. And in this specific case, designing the part with a slider like this yields more direct understanding of how many dimples are on the ball. You can see that on the monitor tab we're monitoring some different output including the total number of dimples along with the percentage increase in surface area using a smooth non-dimpled sphere surface of the same diameter as the point of reference. And this set of values that we have here leads to more encroachment on the individual dimples than desired so decreasing the size of the tooling spheres for the dimple is probably a good idea. So with this polished finished product created for someone who didn't do any of the modeling in XGen, this works really nicely to show to a prospect. But let me take you behind the scenes a bit and do some exposition on how this was created. So here in XGen, you'll see that I have two design sequences already. And I'm taking a little bit of a different approach than I have in previous videos. In this case, I'm going to walk you through a completed design sequence rather than build in real time and see how that's displayed. So uh, let me know in the comments if that works well, if that displays well and you like that, guys like that approach. So I'll go ahead and pull up the design sequence here and just kind of walk you through what we've got. You'll see in this first section here, this is kind of the surface reference and I'll use this to kind of explain the ideology here. What you'll notice is that there is a deeper sphere here, one that's kind of in the interior, and then there's this larger one. So the idea is that the smaller sphere, this one here that's represented by the ball stock, is kind of what a golf ball would look like without any dimples. And the idea is to create these dimples and subtract from that volume. And in order to do that, what we have is a spherical surface that's a slightly larger diameter, and the idea is to put little points on the surface of this sphere, create those uh, little spheres, and then once we have that pattern set, then do essentially a subtract operation in order to make those. So uh, you'll see something else that has been created here is these uh, lines here. So there's three of them. Uh, this is actually one eighth of a sphere, and what we're gonna do is pattern those. So that was just simply created by doing three separate arcs that are 90 degrees. So this is actually an equilateral triangle um, using nine Euclidean geometry so that it rests on the surface. There's actually um, essentially like three 90 degree angles in between them. But of course, like I said, this represents one eighth of the golf ball and then we're going to pattern that. So as we 
move on, what we want to do is take this triangle, this equilateral triangle here, and just kind of pattern it inwards um, in order to get our dimple pattern. So what happens is that we take a certain spacing that we want. We want this to be uh, offset by about an eighth of an inch. And what we do is this loop operator. So this loop operator allows us to plug in this original uh, loop right here. And then what we're going to do is this curve parallel operation for a few cycles until we get enough. So you can see this loop accumulator node sees that we get these four additional inside loopings here. So now we have these total of five triangles here that we can kind of use for the basis of our dimple pattern. Uh, once we have that, then we can actually do a dividing of them. So we take all of those different loops and then we do a divide curve by length operation. And if we go ahead and put on those lines from earlier, then you can see where those are based on. And so what XGen does is it takes each one of those individual loops, each one of those individual lines, uh, rather you can see it there, and then it divides them by that length. So here that length is uh, 0.13. And even here in the experiment tab, you can see where this is one of those parameters that we're going to control later on. So we'll have that displayed there in case we want to make any changes there. But that's what gives us all of our individual little points. So we get those. And then from there, we want to do a little bit of grouping so that we have all of them together, all of our individual points uh, grabbed together, including the endpoints, some of which weren't included from just this operation. And then we can get into making the dimple sphere. So we take all those and we create um, a bunch of spheres here. So if we toggle this on, uh, you'll see that we uh, create these spheres, which are going to essentially be our dimples. Again, that is being controlled by an output parameter here. And it's called dimple radius. So you'll see that it's here in the experiment tab. And so once we have those, we just group them all together. So there's an add operation over here. And then we just need to do some subtracting to remove that. And then we can actually have um, our full output there. So now that we're at this step, uh, what I can do is remove, or rather not remove, but turn off these spheres that we have here, that surface and then that ball stock. So now that uh, those are removed, we can kind of see uh, what that looks like, we'll go ahead and turn off some of these lines as well in those points. So now you can pretty clearly, clearly see the dimple pattern that we've got. And of course, now that we have that, now it's just a matter of splitting this up. So once we want to do um, essentially this section there, so I'll turn that off. These are just different sections to where we get that one eighth of sphere that we want. So if we get the actual output that you can see uh, what that is. So this is what that looks like. And then we just want to do some patterning, uh, just rotate that so that we can get our final output there. That's what this is just doing some uh, rotations, applying some symmetry. And then our final output here is our uh, golf ball that we have. And then once that's generated, if we're interested, we can do some watch nodes to where we're tracking some different parameters, some different geometry that we want. So if we go to the monitor tab, you'll see that uh, we've done some math to where we're controlling or monitoring rather the dimple depth, how deep into the ball this goes from what I've seen about 10 thousandths of an inch is pretty standard. And then we're also looking at the total surface area of the golf ball. So those are some things that we're monitoring. And then uh, just going back to the experiment tab, if we want to adjust any of these parameters, whether it be the stock you know, ball radius that the size of the golf ball without any of the dimples, we can change that. Uh, we can change uh, some things like the dimple radius, essentially how big these uh, dimples are and then how far away they are. 
as well. So we've got a couple of different ways to control the spacing of these dimples and just how many of them that there are. So that is going to be one approach to dimpling our golf ball. So let's go ahead and switch to the circular pattern and take another approach. Going here to the scripting node, you'll see that we've got a area here for our adjustable specs so that that's going to be here on our experiment tab we've got a few different ways that we're going to control things here the approach is going to be a little bit different on this one so here we have uh, again like a stock uh, golf ball so just a sphere and then as we proceed a little bit further taking a look at these first two nodes you'll notice that I have an arc that goes 180 degrees and then we just divide the curves on that the idea here is that we divide this we do half of that we evenly space these and what we want to do is create a circle for each of these heights as it were and then we divide those up so after taking the top two because we can't create a circle that's at the very top of this and project it uh, kind of onto our sphere so we take the top and the bottom one off of there that's what these remove nodes are what we want to do is take a plane create a plane node and then create a plane at each of those different points once we have that then we can do an intersect operation so then now we have our points in the middle the significance of these points along this axis is that's going to be the center point of our circle that we create circles plural so we have each of these circles this is going to be the basis for our dimples that we create because we want to create points along each one of these circles so we'll go ahead and hide this one for now leave the circles here for just a moment and as we get to the point where we want to uh, create the different points there is a issue that we have to resolve which is how do we evenly space these well the approach that I decided to take is to actually split these into odd and even operations here and we'll see the significance of that so you'll see that we've got divide curve by length we'll take this bottom one here to begin with uh, this divide curve by length so we're taking each of these circles and dividing them by 0.15 inches 150 thousandths so that despite the fact that each of these circles are different circumferences the points can be evenly spaced between each of them now the significance of splitting them between uh, the odd and even you know, leaving uh, one space in between each of them is as follows if I turn this divide curve by length on and we scroll in to kind of get a better view of this we'll do a couple of things we'll scroll in and then I'll also do a section view here and once we have the section view that makes it a little bit easier to see scroll in about to the equator here you'll notice that we're getting these points being offset a little bit and the reason that that's happening is because every other circle here in this list is being rotated by about four degrees and once we rotate that what happens is that when we do the divide curve command those points are also rotated a bit that way we don't have a stacking operation happening uh, where they're all lined up with each other we still kind of want that little hex pattern going so this little rotation node is helping with that we'll actually demonstrate what that looks like without it if I go ahead and switch it you'll see that the lines or the points rather start to line up a little bit more as opposed to you know, being offset so we'll switch that back because that's our desired output to actually have them be rotated and that's going to take a a moment to rebuild there but these different points are now offset they're kind of in the orientation that we want and of course we just do a list node to add all of those together and then we can kind of get to where we're actually creating the dimples out of all of those individual points and this is kind of the 
part that takes the longest amount of time to compute. So it's adding all of those points together, uh, doing an add operation to take all of those spheres uh, to add them together. So you'll notice that this node and then this add node um, are the two that kind of take the most amount of time. And then once all of those are added together, then we su simply subtract it from that stock you know, material. So before uh, we turn this uh, back on, I'll just go into the viewing area here, turn some of these guys off and turn the section view off that I did for viewing that. And we can take a look at the finished result. So taking all of these uh, dimples or all these surfaces here and subtracting them from there. So now we have uh, essentially our completed pattern there. And there's one more apparently surface that I need to turn off. So we'll go back here, turn this guy off. And then similar to our previous one, there are some things that we want to kind of monitor. So if we scroll over here, we can see uh, kind of our calculations here where we're doing a reference of the surface area. A little bit of an addendum to our previous one is that we want to keep track of the number of dimples and doing it this way kind of allows us to better keep track of how many dimples there are. Another thing is keeping track of the percentage increase in surface area as opposed to a ball that has no dimples whatsoever. So that's part of that calculation that we're doing over here is taking what would the surface area be without any dimples and then how are we increasing that because that's one of the things that impacts the performance of a golf ball in action is how much more surface area are you getting when you create these extra dimples. So those are two approaches that we have to creating this dimple pattern here in X generative design. So as you can see, the scripting is versatile enough to create whatever geometry you want with virtually any approach, but also that downstream, even someone who is not intimately familiar with modeling in X generative design, whether it be a sales rep or a marketing professional, can still play a pivotal role in using this tool to come to a final design decision. So thank you for watching as always, and stay tuned for our next content on using 3D experience. See you next time.